On this tutorial, we are going to walk you through the velocity reticle calculator on Night Force's website, along with what information you will need to give it so the calculator can make the proper selection for you. Some of the information that the velocity reticle calculator will need is some information that you hand loaders may already know, but for you non hand loaders, we are going to need some data. First, we're going to need the rifle's caliber, the bullet weight and selection, our muzzle velocity and the ballistic coefficient of that bullet. Now some of that information can be found on the manufacturer's box and website or in the Velocity Reticle Calculator's built-in library. Once you have attained that information, the last items we will need is the atmospheric conditions consisting of temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure for the areas that you will be hunting or shooting. For the illustration today, we are going to be using one of our 300 Ultra Mags. This 300 Ultra Mag we have loaded with 210 grain burger bullets, traveling 3,085 feet a second with a ballistic coefficient of 631. Now, atmospherics here in Western Oregon, where we live, is about 28.8 on the barometric pressure, averages between 50 to 60 degrees right now here in the spring, and somewhere around 50 to 70% humidity. Now, with that information, let's go to the calculator and get started. Once on the Velocity Reticle Calculator page, you're simply going to click on the Begin Calculation. That will prompt you to the Product Acknowledgement Terms and Conditions page. Give this a quick read, make sure everything is okay, and simply click Accept. Now here we are at the Ammunition page. Real simple. If you're a factory ammunition shooter, we've got a selection for you here. If you're a custom ammunition guy, we've got one for you here. Now, as we mentioned, we will be shooting one of our custom 300 Ultras, so we're going to click on the custom ammunition page. Okay, from top to bottom, what we've got here is a couple key points. First off is caliber. We know that our caliber is 308. We know that we are shooting a 210 grain Burger bullet. You see it has already prompted the manufacturer for us. So now let's pick the style. The style of bullet we are using is a 210 VLD. As you see over here, it has confirmed the weight, it has confirmed the ballistic coefficient, and now I will input our muzzle velocity. To maximize performance of your rifle and the velocity reticle, you need to use a verified muzzle velocity, which can be obtained using a chronograph. And then click Submit. Here is the atmospherics page. You can click on the optional atmospheric conditions, or if you know it, just go ahead and go right here and say, I know these items, and click on this. Here again, from top to bottom, it's set at default, so it kicks out a couple default settings. Now, we know that we have some changes to make, so we're going to simply click and modify this data to the area that we shoot. All right, as you see, we're gonna go ahead and just round the temperature up to a typical spring day here in Oregon at 60 degrees. We are gonna adjust the barometric pressure to what we know it is from shooting on the mountain several times. And again, we'll shoot for a nice sunny spring day and call the humidity at 20% excuse me. That will give us a density altitude of roughly tw just over 2,900 feet. And we're going to let it select the best reticle option for us. As you see here, it has prompted that we will be using a UHV reticle and the Velocity 1000. So let's get in here and look at the detailed results. All right, this page shows us exactly all of the compiled information all in one spot. Now, it will confirm in this bracket here on the right, we're using a G1 calculation for the ballistic coefficient. It's a 308 caliber, again 210 in weight, Burger is the manufacturer, this is the style, here's the ballistic coefficient, the muzzle velocity, and rounding up is the atmospheric conditions. We move over here to the left and we can look at the deviation that's involved with the reticle lines in the scope. Now there's two ways to look at this. You can either look at it in MOA or you can convert this to inches. So. If you're a standard 200 yard zero, you can see that it's a dead neutral zero for a 200 yard side end, and then it will let you know plus or minus in inches how many inches you will be 
from your point of aim using the reticle at these said yardages. As you can see, this reticle is so perfectly suited and the highest point, it's only 1.8466 inches from my point of aim. That is a very, very close tolerance. Now, if we want to look at this slightly different, you can go to their suggested optimum sight in, which would change it to a 210 yard zero, and it must get some of these closer to the half minute deviation, but again, you can see them all in inches. Now, if you're a minute of angle guy, you can go back and click this, and it will reconvert these all for you. Either way, you're able to look at the deviation and decide if this is acceptable. As you can see here with a 210 yard zero, the minute of angle deviation is a 0.23, which means that your bullet will not impact more than 2.3 inches from the point of aim at 1,000 yards. I would say that is pretty good. Once you've looked this over and it is all satisfactory with you, you can scroll up here to the print results, print one of these off, throw it in your gun case, and hit the range. If you feel that you want to give the reticle calculator a few test runs, feel free to go to nightforceoptics.com and give it a try. <laughs>